Well, welcome, David. It's lovely to have you here this morning and to have a chat with you on a, a really important topic. I think one that we're hearing in the reward and benefits um, community a lot right now, and that's really looking forward into 2021 uh, and the business risks that so many employers are facing, trying to work out about their talent, um, the decline of office-based benefits, um, potential cyber threats or, or, or data security threats, either for the fact that so many employees are working in a dispersed manner, possibly at home, and even your own reward and benefits team working at home. So David, how on earth do you go about assessing these risks and dealing with them? Yeah, no, it's a really interesting question and obviously it's something that we're discussing at length with clients in a minute. And the first thing I think to point out, that this, this crisis feels a bit different to the financial crisis at the back end of the, the 2000s. And this is definitely a crisis around people and how organisations can respond to the inevitable people risk that, uh, that is thrown up. So, um, you know, there's a few things that we could look at. I mean, I think first and foremost, organisations need to, from a strategic point of view, just take a bit of a back step and almost assess the current state of their nation to understand what could potentially hurt them or what is actually hurting them right now. And, you know, that could be anything from engagement and making sure that their people feel connected to the business. It could be their well-being. It could be ensuring that the business um, themselves remain competitive and relevant in their, their sector. Uh, but it could be right down to, you know, the, the BAU of actually running benefit and reward programs. So how do they manage data and benefit processes in a safe uh, manner from, from home? So I think from my point of view, you need to make sure that people have got the right tools to do their job. Um, you know, you need to make sure that they can do their job safely and securely. securely. And we're seeing businesses who may have, you know, big populations of people working from home, but they might also have, you know, a good number of field-based um, employees that also need to make sure that they can feel fully safe and supported in the roles that they do. So I think that is obviously key to, to ensuring that businesses remain productive uh, and to ensure that they can you know, ultimately stay in business during in the pandemic. Um, from a data and cyber security point of view, that is really, really important. You've got people working from home that might be using unsecured networks or might be using their own kit. So they've got to make sure that the, um, the security protocols that sit around that uh, are fit for purpose to make sure that there isn't any, um, any risk to that data integrity. Um, by far and away, the biggest challenge, I think, has been engagement. Uh, and this, again, does directly link back to uh, you know, how successful and productive a business can be and trying to engage employees to make them feel like they are uh, still connected to the business has been a real challenge. Um, you know, we've seen over 40% of the workforce you know, now working from home. So again, you need to make sure that you give people that uh, right consumer grade experience with their, um, with their technology, their digital platforms. So we've seen during um, you know, the pandemic, and you know, Debbie, you've seen it yourself, having the right tool like Amazon, Deliveroo, Instagram, that they've really stepped up. And yes, Jeff Bezos has benefited as a result of it uh, in terms of his own personal wealth. But that, that type of experience is now what is expected from employees when it comes to the HR and benefits technology. So again, you need to check what you're doing today to make sure that it is actually providing people with that, um, that, that right user experience, because ultimately people will vote with their feet if they feel that they can't do their jobs um, in, in the right manner. Um, for, for the majority of employers that I speak to, all of the bits are there, all the pieces of the jigsaw are there in their benefits ecosystem. But it's again, taking a look at it and making sure that you can start to connect the dots and actually drive greater automation and efficiency. And I suppose my, my final point really would just be making sure that you know you listen to your employees, you make sure that you know the benefits that you're providing are still relevant. You know, we've seen people who no longer can access workplace benefits in the office. So what are you doing around that? Um, and obviously just make sure that you use it as an opportunity to take stock of um, you know what you do today, but ultimately what you can do next year to drive better uh, engagement for your people. Yeah, you know, great things to be looking at right now. And um, definitely, I think some employers are doing it, but some are just at the start of that. And, you know, one of the things that you and I talk about quite a bit as well is data and using data and using analytics. So how would you suggest employers um, use their data and their analytics to help predict the challenges and risks and opportunities specifically for reward and benefits that they might be facing um, in 2021? 
I would say that this this is a huge, huge challenge, and it isn't easy. Given you know, again, the conversations that that we have with um, with employers is that yes, they have a great sort of rich wealth of data, but actually getting hold of it in one sort of centralized place where they can use it meaningfully is a huge challenge. You know, you could be getting information from your providers, from your HR system, your benefits platform. Um, from you know employees themselves, and, and so from that point of view, actually um, consolidating it and having it in a in a, um, in a medium where you can actually start to make some informed decisions it is a huge challenge. So I think if you take it right back to basics, next year is going to be a huge challenge when it comes to to budgets, and every pound of benefit spend is, is going to be um, really scrutinised. And therefore, being able to evidence the return on investment that you make. Um, with regards to your benefits and even you know for things like your digital platforms it's going to be really really important um so from that point of view how can you make sure that you start to shape the right business case but actually having that data to show how you know your benefit strategy is aligned and the data that you have actually informs your sort of future decisions is is really really important those employees that can't access the data or see it in disparate places are still going to have a huge challenge. So, so what I would say is basically take it back to basics. Um, have a look at you know what data sources you have today. What what data are you what are you going to try and use data to to solve the problem of? So how can you better use the data? So it could be that you I don't know you want to benchmark where you sit against your competitors. It could be that you want to remain informed on which benefits resonate with your employees through benefits take up, or it could be anything from gender, or it could be um, benefit spend. Um, and then align this to the strategy, which will help you, I think, become a bit more predictive in terms of, you know, yes, which benefits resonate, but how much you're spending on your benefits. And that will ultimately help uh, shape your future strategy. So it's, it's really, really important. But I do think that there is a, a big um, sort of challenge in, in our industry at the moment in terms of getting effective data together. Thank you so much, David. Uh, that, that insight was invaluable and really good talking to you today. No problem. Thanks very much.